How's it going out there? It is Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. You're listening to the Wall Street Unplugged podcast, which is normally hosted by the one and only Frank Curzio every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday now that we switched to our newer format a little while ago. But as he noted yesterday in his monologue, he's on the road. He is traveling, living it up, and doing boots on the ground research at the Consumer Electronics Show. Yes, he is in Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas, as they say. (laughs) I'll keep the singing to a minimum. So today and tomorrow, you are stuck with me. Welcome, Daniel Creech here, Senior Analyst at Curzio Research. Have no fear. Frank will be back in the saddle. We'll, you know, we're just kicking off the new year. Uh, Things are moving. Lots happening. That's really exciting. So more than happy to uh, uh, try to sit in for him and uh, get us through these next couple of days. I'm going to go over a few things uh, on the market, kind of set the tone for what I expect on a 2022 uh, what we'll need to navigate and what Frank and I have been kicking around and uh, and what we're expecting to play out and such. Plus, I'll give you some updates from Frank. Uh, I talked to him earlier as he uh, was going through day one where he gets access a little earlier than most because of his media badge and because of all you wonderful listeners out there uh, to the podcast. So that's pretty cool. I give him a hard time about being famous and uh, connected. So, you know, us... Uh, peons like myself just have to sit back here and hold down the fort while he's out enjoying himself. But be sure and check him out on TikTok. Uh, He's going to do a lot of live videos. He's going to be posting a lot of things and pictures uh, also on the Curzio Research YouTube page. So be sure and do that. Um, Only other programming note here outside of the one and only Frank being being out is uh, I I want to point out and apologize up front about how I sound. Uh, I feel like I'm talking through my nose and I'm stuffed up a little bit here. I was jumping through uh, climates and of course the weather can't make up its mind. I uh, I went to Ohio for uh, the Christmas holiday to visit with family and I was in Southwest Ohio for the spring holiday, I should say, because it was 60, like 61 degrees on Christmas day. And uh, don't, don't misunderstand. I don't want to complain. I wasn't, uh, although now that I don't live uh, in cold weather, uh, I wouldn't have mind seeing snow. You know, snow is easy to visit. Uh, And then you can leave. Everybody that is in cold weather or actually has winters uh, is probably shaking their heads. But uh, yeah, it was 61 degrees. And uh, one of the things that I look forward to most and one one thing that I really enjoy is uh, premium cigars. So I always take some Romeo and Juliet's up to my grandfather. Him and I, uh, that's kind of our time together where we get to hang out, burn a cigar. And yeah, on Christmas Day, we sat in the garage. Uh, sun was shining and uh, it was just pleasant as can be. Then I come back to Florida, to sunny Florida, and it was already summer. Um, I, th- I flew back on the 30th and it was 80, 81, 82 degrees or something like that. Pretty crazy. So now it's now it's colder or chillier and windy and everybody's walking around and it sounds like everybody has a cold or the Omni, Omnicon variant or whatever. It's sweeping across everywhere. So Uh, I hope you guys are all safe. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas uh, and a wonderful New Year. Hopefully you got, uh, it was uneventful, meaning everybody stayed out of jail, but you were able to enjoy some adult beverages and uh, ring in the New Year. Say goodbye, good riddance to 2021, and uh, let's get excited for 2022. So yeah, so I sound rough. We'll get through this together. Um, I'll give up an update on Frank here in just a minute, but I wanted to turn your attentions and just highlight some of the things that worked out well in 2021. And uh, again, what I think will continue to work well in 2022 and just give you some, uh, give you some macro themes to pay attention to and, uh, and that sort of thing. I've, I've mentioned this in the past. Uh, we don't get paid to say this. We just try to give out uh, some of the free websites or services that we use to do research and, and look at data. Uh, Finviz is a great website. I've talked about them before. I do hope that uh, as our audience continues to expand and uh, we get on the map that we can charge them, that'd be nice to uh, earn some more uh, fees or, or uh, shout out fees and uh, advertising fees from them. But uh, we'll work towards that. But anyway, you can hit your, when you go to Finviz, uh, it's got some charts and some data. And then if you hit their groups tab, it kind of funnels everything and it breaks it down by sector. And you can look at different uh, timelines of performance. And I just pulled up the year uh, performance or year to date at the end of the year. And I wanted to see, hey, what really worked in 2021? And do I think that'll continue to work? So anybody that uh, you consumers out there and anybody that drives a vehicle uh, knows the energy had to perform very well. And it did. Energy uh, took the top slot with uh, th- almost 37% return last year, the energy sector, uh, followed by real estate 
at uh, 28%, technology at almost 27%, and financials at 21%. In short, I expect, uh, if you've listened to the podcast here, you know that um, I, I've been bullish on oil uh, longer than what I can take credit for because I should have got in a lot earlier <laughs> and missed a lot of that move. Um, I did throw uh, ExxonMobil as just uh, low-hanging fruit for the dollar stock club. I think that's up a handful of percent. Hasn't been a great trade, but I do think it'll work out and uh, go go a lot higher and work out for you guys if you followed that advice. Um, why am I bullish on energy? With all the variants around and the rumors of lockdowns, you know, you got China having a zero COVID policy. So if a few cases are breaking out, you're, you're reading about lockdowns and millions of people. Uh, that's going to affect more uh, supply chains, more shipping, um, you know, headaches or cause more shipping headaches and things like that. Uh, you know, air travel isn't quite back to pre, pre-pandemic levels yet. But I'm, ex- you know, the Fed has finally admitted they're not um, even selling this dream of transitory inflation anymore. And during your periods of higher inflation, I just, I feel like that's going to continue to put pressure on commodities, oil being the easiest and low hanging fruit there. So yes, I think energy prices are going to continue to rise across the board. We are going into and in winter now, uh, which typically you have higher uh, prices. I mean, natural gas, I know some of these are pulled, pulled back, uh, but I'm just bullish on energy as, as I am inflation. Uh, real estate the same way. Technology, uh, the big dogs, I, th- I still think you can hide out in the Microsofts and Facebooks and Googles. Uh, I don't know that they'll have such a stellar year going forward. Um, but, you know, don't, don't be crazy overweight, but I, I'm not worried about having any exposure there. And uh, still like Facebook. I, I still like those companies around the political sphere. And for you new listeners out there, uh, regular listeners know that I look at everything. I look at the world through an economical and political lens. Um, I'll, I'll tell you exactly where I stand. You don't have to agree with that. I'm just wanting to build my thesis on what I'm thinking about, why I'm thinking about, and how, how recommendations come about here, uh, from me anyway. And so um, the political side, uh, that's going to continue to push uh, energy prices higher. Um, and when you see, or excuse me, and on the technology side, anytime you read about Google or Microsoft or Facebook getting broken up, their monopolies, they're going to get dragged in front of a committee hearing uh, in D.C. I, I just think that's bullish. I, I don't think that they're going to do anything that's going to harm them. Uh, from a business standpoint, I think that there's incredible value there. And so I, I think that should those big dogs should continue to do just fine. Financials. Coming off a stellar year, 21%. Um, Goldman Sachs has been a, a good pick for us and the Curzio Research Advisory for all you subscribers. Uh, we like to have fun with Goldman and call him the vampire squid, whoever dubbed that, referenced that, just the ruthless guys on Wall Street, as all Wall Street is. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm bullish on them because banks have found a way during a long period of 0% interest rates, basically, to find other sources of revenue. That's not going away. And if interest rates do and are rising and they actually earn interest on deposits and or gives them more flexibility and more revenue streams, that's a bonus for them. Now, you got to couple with that. If interest rates start spiking, it's going to cause slowdowns in the economy, which could counter that, you know. But overall, I am bullish on financials and I think you should have exposure to those. Um, Goldman Sachs, even play some of the smaller banks. um, because there's probably, I, I would expect more mergers and acquisitions and things going on that way. Uh, healthcare had a had a solid year up double digits as well, coming in just under 13%. Lucky number 13 for healthcare. Um, I like healthcare. I, you know, on a on a political side, you have massive push to expand uh, healthcare services and different programs. And so I want you to pay attention this year, especially because it's an election year for the midterms coming up. Uh, but pay attention, and I'll, I'll segue into the uh, Omicron, uh, Omicron to cover all my bases in just a minute. But I want you to pay attention to the way things are sold and or um, presented to you, mostly in the in the media. And that's a that's a big key because I want to share with you, for instance. This Build Back Better plan that is being debated now and whether or not they have the votes or not, how are they going to go about that? Um, that's infrastructure, and that expands a lot of things, child services. Uh, I believe there's some health care in there and all that kind of stuff. But there's another part of this bill. There's another section where they're dubbing it, and you can see politicians say human infrastructure and more of a social safety net and the idea that, hey, uh, we got uh, wealth inequality, 
and you got too few people that have too much money and too many people that don't have enough. So we want to distribute that. We want a uh, wealth distribution. Now, this isn't going to shock anybody, and if it does, hopefully you're all sitting down, but that's not the way to go at it. Uh, that's for another time, in my opinion. I don't think the government should step in and do that, uh, but it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what Daniel Creech thinks. Uh, I don't make the rules. We just have to play within them and navigate accordingly. Um, so I, I like those sectors. We'll see what's going on there. Um, Devon Energy is, uh, I think it's at 52-week highs uh, this week. I, I don't have it right in front of me, but Frank and I talked about that as a way to play rising oil prices, if you believe in that. Um, and then we'll, uh, like I talked about the big tech stocks, um, the financial with Goldman Sachs and other smaller banks and healthcare. Um, you know, you can buy, you can buy an ETF or, uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, we, d- we did Humana or, um, ah, I'm drawing a blank and I don't want to, I don't want to waste too much time on there, but we can, we can give you some more other picks on that. But yeah, I, I like those picks. And just to put into perspective here, 2021, this was in the uh, Wall Street Journal from Monday, and they did a great uh, recap and things. But the S&P 500 rose 27% in 2021, and that was capping the third consecutive year of double-digit gains. All right, now the forward PE is about 21 times. That's higher than the the 10-year average uh, and such. And get this, Goldman Sachs, RBC, Wells Fargo, and Credit, Credit Suisse predict that for this year, 2022, the S&P 500 will rise somewhere between 6% and 11%. Now, compared to 27%, that may sound weak or not so exciting. But remember, we're coming off a massive bull run, uh, lots of stimulus money, a lot of uh, tailwinds from the government, not necessarily needing the economy to, to unfold or produce on its own. And Excuse me. We're also changing this entire paradigm shift of interest rates. So going forward, if the Fed follows through with what it says and starts hiking interest rates, it's tapering its stimulus money through bond purchasing and all that. That's going to have an effect. That's going to cause some volatility. But I want to just spend another couple minutes here on it's okay to have rising interest rates. It's okay to have a cooling off period or slowdown. Uh, The Fed is in such control and so obsessed with managing and controlling the economy that you would think that a recession or a pullback is like the end of the world. The wheels are just going to fall off completely. And that's simply not true. Um, Now, don't misunderstand. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I don't want the market to crash. I don't want me or our investors and our subscribers uh, to lose money. No, not at all. But I'm trying to paint the picture that it's not the end of the world if you have a flat year. Uh, we're still going to be able to take advantage with individual stocks, but have exposure to the S&P 500. That, that's okay. And just don't, don't go headline by headline or day by day because the media will just sell you all kinds of crazy stuff. Remember, they want you to click on things. Everybody does. That's how they generate clicks, fees, and all that kind of stuff. But just uh, realize that one day doesn't make an entire uh, streak and or change something. So that'll be a little interesting. But I like I like how some of the banks are just saying, hey, we might have a flat year. You know, let's say we're up 5%. Let's say we're down 5% as the industry. It's not the end of the world. So just prepare for that. And um, if, if you're nervous about volatility or anything, it's okay to have some cash on the sidelines. It's okay to take winners or some profits off of your big winners. There's nothing wrong with that. So don't get caught up in, uh, you know, the, the trading mentality. Not that trading is bad, but just don't get caught up in that and be too wishy-washy, as my, uh, as my grand folks would often say. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, that, that's funny, but I'll, I'll tell that story some, some other time. Um, so 2022, why do I think the market will be up or down? I'll take the easy one up. Uh, I, you know, five to 10% sounds just fine. I, I don't have a number. I'm not as smart as the Goldman Sachs guys or the other investment banks, but there's just too much money still sloshing around in the economy. Um, I don't understand unless yields really, uh, in, unless interest rates really take off and spike, uh, which I don't see exactly happening. Of course, I could be wrong, and I will gladly admit it if I am. But um, the Fed is trying to, the Fed just continues to move the goalpost, uh, and that's okay. They're, you know, they do. So, yes, they they say they're going to raise rates, uh, do all these t- this tapering and stuff, but they could always change their mind. So there's just a lot of easy easing still going on. There's a lot of monetary policy still going on. A lot of those tailwinds are still in place. And I think that they're going to try to navigate that because, yes, despite what they say, I do think that they watch the stock market. And I don't think that Jerome Powell uh, wants to take on another 
tenure, another term at the head of the Fed and uh, be responsible or be in office or hold his position when uh, stocks crater or or tank. So I just don't think that's that big of a possibility. Um, also, the big elephant in the groom is the new coronavirus variant. And so far, if you notice, and I talked to you about the way things are sold and pay attention to that this year um, with the... Uh, with, with inflation, how it was trying to be sold as transitory, now that's out of the bag. With the human infrastructure bill that's going to come and pull at your heartstrings to get more stimulus money in the hands of people. Also, have you noticed, and if you, and if you haven't yet, uh, I want you to pay close attention to this because I've been watching CNBC the last couple of days, and even though it kills me at times, um, you know, it's good to have a pulse of what mainstream is talking about and have an idea of what's trending and or what's going on. And if you notice, this variant for coronavirus is, I mean, the mayor of New York, uh, not New York, excuse me, the mayor of uh, Chicago was on CNBC earlier this week and was basically saying, oh, well, we expect this to peak in a couple weeks and then really slow down. And the data is showing that, hey, it's it's more like the flu than the other variants. And yes, it's highly contagious. And as you see, it's, it was getting over a million cases a day. Um, but they're not worried about the the long-term uh, or the big health effects. It's not as dangerous as what they're saying. And everybody's cautious on that. You don't want to jump the ship. Everybody wants to be safe and all that. I get that. But the narrative now um, is, hey, this is this is getting better. And on CNBC also, they had, and I, I wrote it down here, uh, it was Dr. Kavita Patel, and I'm probably butchering that. I believe it was on Tuesday I saw some of this interview. And uh, I believe Becky Quick did it. And the long and short of it was it was a decent interview until the end when it was kind of the wheels were falling off because people are growing frustrated over these testing, um, the amount of tests available. I'm sure you saw headlines about people getting in fistfights and long wait times in New York City and this and that and the other. The media has done so good at scaring the hell out of you for the last couple of years over this that now they're trying to backtrack and they're talking about. And of course, Florida is one of the favorite whipping boys. Uh, because they're telling people not to test for this and not use test if you don't feel bad or you have no symptoms or whatever. But the narrative, Fauci's even talking about, hey, we shouldn't focus on the number of cases so much as we should hosp- hospitalizations and or deaths. Uh, and that's great. We, I would argue we should have been doing that a long time ago because, yeah, you can get caught up in the number and scare the hell out of people in a million cases a day. But if it's not doing anything overall, A, we should be excited about that. We should be happy about that for everybody, that it's not as dangerous as what was once feared. And that narrative is going to be a tailwind for the markets, in my opinion. I mean, you can shrug that off and say, okay, well, we're kind of taking that off the plate of a total lockdown. Uh, Biden, President Biden spoke er, uh, earlier this week, and he continues to pound the table and say, hey, uh, schools need to remain open. Uh, we have a, a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Of course, he likes to put the blame there, but he had to turn ship. You know, listen, he ran on the idea that he wasn't going to mandate vaccines. He wasn't going to shut down the country. He was going to shut down the virus. And then last week he says, hey, there's no federal solution. This is a state thing. Uh, I'm going on vacation. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but they're changing the goalpost and they have to because people are growing frustrated with doing what they were told, A, get a vaccine. Now they need booster shots. Uh, Pfizer, which is another pick I've been uh, excited about, uh, tongue in cheek, if you put your conscience aside and are okay with uh, this stuff being forced, but that's one way to profit from it. And I believe that's either at or near 52 week highs. Again, I don't have it right in front of me, but um, you know, they they got the COVID pill coming out. Um, I believe it was them. I don't want to get these confused. And I'm sorry. This is on record, so that's good. You can hold me accountable. But uh, I believe that uh, for kids or younger kids, they just got approved or the FDA, somebody approved uh, that you could get a booster five months after a vaccine or six months. My point is, is that this is going to be an ongoing thing. And people are not only frustrated about that, in my opinion, but they're starting to push back there. And that's why you have the moving of the goalpost between everybody uh, with Fauci uh, explaining, hey, let's not focus completely on on the cases. Let's focus on something else. That's all positive for the markets because that's a bullish scenario. The idea to get back to normal, the economy can operate. People aren't going to be scared and be willing to go out, spend money, go to work, uh, get new jobs, pay for services, pay for goods. That's all good uh, for the economy, and it's also good for the stock market. So in a nutshell, 
I, I do think I, I think we could have a positive year. I do think we'll have a lot of volatility, uh, but with volatility is going to come a lot of opportunity in individual stocks, and that's something that I'm really excited about and I'm looking forward to. Uh, one last thing on the uh, uh, Omicron thing is, and I'll sum this up this way. Um, if you haven't listened to the Joe Rogan podcast, you should you should do it through Spotify. And a couple of weeks ago, he interviewed a Dr. Peter A. McCullough, and more recently, he interviewed Dr. Robert Malone. I'm not going to go into great detail, um, but I'm I'm going to sum it up this way. And I told some people um, a month or so ago, and I and repeated this in uh, Ohio when I was visiting and and uh, was talking to family and friends. I don't care what your opinion is on COVID or uh, any of that uh, on on how it's being handled how how should it be handled my point is and these are long interviews but you can you can download them or you can just stream them uh, listen to them at your own time but if you're not willing to listen to these interviews and listen to these doctors these uh, published well-respected uh, top of the field doctors talk about all kinds of different things and field different questions from Joe Rogan then I just uh, that's a bummer to me if you're not willing to put in that time because all you have to do is listen and just think, you know, use your brain that God gave you. Um, have you heard most of this stuff in mainstream media? You'll probably hear things you've you've not heard before. Uh, why is that? Uh, why are some of these getting censored on social media platforms like YouTube? Um, why? And if you're not willing to put in a little bit of time and pay attention, that's okay. You're allowed to. Uh, but it's very difficult, in my opinion, to form an opinion, and you're just going to be persuaded and pushed around by what you hear and basically who's barking the loudest and or the most fear because that's what gains, uh, grabs your attention, including my attention. I'm not I'm not singling anybody out there, uh, but definitely check out those. That should be your New Year's resolution. Listen to those two podcasts uh, and do it quickly. And like I said, just just understand and ask yourself why and what's going on there. Um, back to the markets real quick from FactSet. Um, I think this was from December 17th. They did their update, um, for earnings and different things. Uh, fourth quarter earnings will be starting uh, to report here relatively soon, but just as an overall macro view before we give Frank's update, um, revenue growth for 2022 is coming in at around seven and a half percent is what they're expecting. And earnings growth is about 9%. Uh, that's for the companies, um, for, cyclical year 2022. Why do I point that out? Just to give you a heads up. So the big banks are calling between 6 and 11% increase in market indices this year, uh, revenue growth, earnings growth. So when you're looking at your own ideas or we're pitching our own ideas and why we like it, we're going to look for things that are of good value. Uh, why are they down? Why are we buying now? And are they projected to grow faster than the overall market? Then they could outperform, see more money flow into it and make all of us lots of money. So that's that's kind of where we were and where we're headed in a nutshell. Um, now let's turn to uh, a fun topic here with, with Frank's update from uh, day one where he was using his media badge because of all you wonderful listeners here on the podcast. Uh, again, be sure and check him out on the TikTok page uh, and Curzio Research YouTube. But I was talking to him earlier, and I got to tell you, it's just like another Wednesday with uh, one of Frank's good rants, even though he's not personally here. But uh, he's a little pissed off, and I can't blame him because a lot of major companies uh, went virtual and or canceled, pulled out of the CES, Consumer Electronics Show, uh, because of the uh, coronavirus variant. And so he got up early and started going uh, on, the, on day one of the media day, and a lot of the presentations were moved to virtual. And as you know, that just doesn't have the same, you know, it's like watching a great concert in person or at home on a DVD. Yeah, it ain't bad on a DVD, but if you're going to watch somebody in person and you get to your seat and then you realize you're just going to have to watch a big screen and not have them on stage, that's going to be a disappointment. So he was pretty upset about that. Uh, he thinks that the companies that are going all virtual, uh, even the big guys like Intel, are really going to uh, struggle with that and really going to suffer. Uh, the highlight for day one of him was no doubt uh, Qualcomm. He said he went there, they were live, they were in person, and uh, he was he was blown away. And I don't think I'm exaggerating that. I think he'd be just fine with me saying that. But he said everything is around the metaverse. And it's just fun because you guys know Frank's a passionate guy. Uh, he's doing his boots on the ground. He's doing what he loves to do out there, digging through ideas, talking to people. Got a lot of interviews and stuff lined up. Um, but you could just tell, I, I got the impression, I remember him a few years ago talking about how everything was being connected and we had some good recommendations around some smart cities and connectivity. Everything was going around Alexa through Amazon. Uh, this year already with the Qualcomm, he was saying how 
they everything is just metaverse. Uh, everybody, a lot of different companies are going in on the metaverse and augmented reality. Um, Qualcomm, I think, threw out a $700 billion opportunity as this un, uh, unfolds over the coming years. That is just a massive, massive opportunity. And, and Qualcomm wants to be the gateway to the metaverse. Now, there's still a lot of, uh, there's still a lot of details that are light, still a lot of unknown about this. Uh, we've talked about this on the podcast with what Zuckerberg through Facebook, or now Meta, um, thinks about that. They're incredibly bullish, pouring tens of billions of dollars a year into that. Uh, but he was explaining how uh, Qualcomm wants to be the gateway. So definitely put that on a watch list. That may find its way into uh, Curzio Research Advisory, uh, our newsletter that focuses more on large cap and things. Uh, and Qualcomm has partnered with Microsoft uh, for, I believe he said something through Microsoft Glasses. Again, probably more on the augmented side of reality and things. Uh, but the fact that they were there in person, he's going to be doing, uh, they're going to unveil a lot of new products, it sounds like. Again, be sure to check out TikTok because he's going to try to capture a lot of that live and uh, post to you guys, just like you were there, right alongside him. Uh, John Deary said it has some really cool stuff. I know that's kind of a boring, nothing against all you farmers out there, uh, but you don't think of an exciting stock, or at least I don't when you think of John Deere, but, uh, the investments they've made and the, uh, the technology they have with just, uh, you know, narrowing in on data and artificial intelligence is just amazing, uh, just amazing. So that's pretty cool. Um, the media day, he said, uh, the overall vibe that he, he was really upbeat overall, uh, but he is disappointed and, you know, there's less people, less companies is a good thing. It got a little too big and convoluted at times. Uh, this is better to focus on less companies. You get a little bit more time, but the buzz isn't there or the same at the beginning. So hopefully that kind of picks up. He was talking about how there wasn't any, uh, lines in the airport, uh, for the CES when you get to Vegas, which normally is. And that was a big change. And they're obviously expecting a lot less people there this year. Um, just because of the coronavirus and the fears and all that kind of stuff. So kind of a bummer there, but definitely from day one, Qualcomm was the big takeaway. And uh, tomorrow, on tomorrow's podcast, I'll give you another update from Frank and also talk about some more headlines and things like that. So uh, again, we're really excited here about uh, a lot of different things here at Curzio Research. Uh, we couldn't be more excited. I couldn't be more um just grateful to be behind the mic, sitting in for Frank here for a couple days. And uh, hope all of you guys are having a great start to the year. And we'll check back in tomorrow. Again, uh, I know I'm plugging this pretty hard, but uh, send your feedback uh, to me, Daniel, at CurzioResearch.com. Frank is Frank's, Frank at CurzioResearch.com. And again, check out the, uh, Frank Cur or, uh, the TikTok and the Curzio Research YouTube. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Have a great day.